Welcome back to week four of our carnivore challenge and I am here today to get us all revved up for week four. We are almost to the finish line and I hope you guys feel as amazing as I do and have had some great successes in these last three weeks and going into our fourth week. I am Jen Lee, if you don't know me already, and you are along with me on this gentastic journey about all things that bring joy to life. And good health certainly brings joy to life. Good health and feeling our best all allow much more joy into our lives. So thanks for being here today. And I've got several tips for you today. And I also have three amazing recipes that I know you're going to love. Before we get to our tips and tricks and recipes, I wanted to see how you guys did this week. And if you would, please comment below and let me know how you're doing. Several of you have been doing that and I super appreciate that. And I've been trying to answer all the comments that I'm getting and I'm just thrilled by all the great successes you guys are having and the positive feedback that I'm getting from you as well. So congratulations. For me, this has been a tough week. I had a company picnic that I went to and I thought, oh, I'm sure there'll be something there that I'll be able to eat. And normally there is like hamburgers, hot dogs, super easy to get those in, just leave the buns off, right? Well, I walked in and they had pasta, fried chicken with a lot of breading. They had garlic bread and tons and tons of cookies. <laughs> the positive out of that is I got to meet a viewer of mine out of the blue and it's interesting when you meet someone for the first time and they know a lot more about you than you do about them but she introduced herself and then said i know you i watch your videos and it was super fun i've never had that happen before so it was great experience for me and so it made the fact that i was having trouble figuring out what to eat a little bit easier but i just ate the, a couple of chicken wings and i took most of the breading and skin off so it was just fine as for the rest of the week, I lost another pound. At this point in my journey last time when I started strict carnivore the first time, I did the same thing. I got to like week three, four, and I had a little bit of a stall. And really what that stall is, is it's your body catching up. So we had a lot of fluid loss in those first couple of weeks. And now it's converting that into actual fat loss because your body gets really good at re-regulating that fluid amount that your body needs. And it helps with those electrolytes and the salting of our food and things like that. And so then what you're actually seeing now is your body converting that just that fluid loss into true fat loss. And so you'll see little stalls here and there and they are totally normal. They may be a little frustrating, which is why that scale is a little evil thing. <laughs> because we focus on it too much and we allow that to be how we determine how well we're doing. And really, it's a lot more than that. So this week, I've actually felt a lot better. My clothes are fitting a lot better. My face feels a little bit thinner to me. So even though I don't see the scale moving, it's really everything trying to catch up and me having a little bit more fat loss in this week. So that's been exciting. My energy is still great. My lack of pain is still fantastic. Let me know in the comments below if any of you have also had some of that chronic pain you've had your whole life all of a sudden starting to disappear and just having more energy. Okay, before we get to those tips, who tried out the challenges I gave you last week? I hope you did. I know I did and my husband did as well and it really makes a difference on your energy level and your ability to sleep and digest your food, all those things. So I hope you tried those. If you didn't get a chance to see week three video, I'll link it up above and you can click on that and maybe watch that first or finish watching this one and come back to that later. I always include all of the videos from the Carnivore Challenge in the description box below. So you can go there and click on the different ones that you maybe not had a chance to watch or the prep videos, which were from several weeks back, which prepared us for the challenge. So if you're new to the challenge, I would suggest you watch those first and then join us in on this challenge. You can start whenever, but we're starting week four. So if you haven't done that yet, just start when you can and we'll catch you up. Okay, let's start with tip number one. My first tip for today is about testing out the amount of fat that you include in your daily eating. And the reason I say that is because that's the one piece that you'll see a lot of differences when you watch the other influencers on 
YouTube. As an example, Steak and Butter Gal eats a several sticks of butter a day and for months and months and months at the beginning all she ate was like five sticks of butter a day so she is a big butter proponent and so fat 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 and a lot of them are but then you'll find others like maria and craig emmerich maria is more on the keto side craig is carnivore and you'll listen to them and they'll say cut down on that fat so that you lose the fat that's on your body you know, there's something to be said that we're all individuals. More or less fat will work better for some than others. And also it depends on why you're doing this plan. Are you doing this for healing? Because I do believe that healing, fat is important to healing. And so if you're doing this way of eating to heal illnesses or ailments that you have, then I would say keep your fat up because fat is very, very healing. It's kind of the magic. If you're not worried about weight loss so much, or weight loss is just gonna be kind of a side effect, then uh, I wouldn't worry so much about the fat and how much fat you have, other than keeping it way up. At least as many grams of fat as you have protein. And remember, we're always going to maintain that protein. And that is pretty much across the board when you listen to anybody, any of the doctors or influencers that talk about carnivore, long-term carnivore people, they all talk about maintaining those protein macros. And the ones I gave you are a minimum. So one gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight is really something that you want to do at a minimum. So that's pretty consistent across all of the different carnivore influencers and doctors. The thing that, again, is different is the fat. And I will say for women, fat is super essential for your hormones and making sure your hormones are balanced and things like that. So don't cut way back on it. If you listen to Craig and Maria Emmerich about it, they talk about how you can sometimes do protein sparing fasts. And what that means is you maintain your protein levels, but you're going to decrease your fat just one or two days a week. So they have recipes and things like that where you're going to eat more like egg whites and lean proteins like turkey breast where we've been staying away from some of that stuff and meeting, eating more of the high fat meats. Test it out. If you're having a long stall and a long stall would be multiple weeks and sometimes multiple months because your body is going to be adjusting throughout all this time on carnivore. So let me know how you guys do with the fat and do a little bit more research. And then hopefully all of us being individuals, you'll be able to match what your body needs. Tip two is start to incorporate weight training into your exercise regimen. Now, last week I had suggested that after meals that you walk for 10 to 20 minutes whatever you feel you can do. And we had some rain this week, so I was doing some of those free workouts online. I found one that was on Instagram and I'll link her below. She was actually really good. It was all low impact, but we were walking, we were kind of lifting our legs and lifting our arms a little bit. There's a little bit of core in there. That stuff is great after a big meal. It helps you start to digest and it really just helps keep, keep things moving along. So this week, if you can, try and incorporate some weight training. The reason why I suggest weight training is because it's huge for longevity. Well, most people want to live a little bit longer, so it is good for your longevity. It is also good for the maintenance of this weight loss that we're experiencing. So those of you that haven't started losing yet, you're still healing, but when you start losing, the more muscle we have, the more we burn on a daily basis, just maintaining that, those muscles. And for those of us over 50, I know there's a lot of my viewers out there that are over 50. Uh, for us, it's proven that after your 30s, your muscle mass starts to decline steadily each year. And we just don't want that, right? Because our muscles are important to keep us moving and active and healthy in our retirement years, right? So let's make sure we're maintaining and even increasing that muscle mass. I mentioned in one of my prep videos that I had a scan, a body scan at my health club. It showed that even though my weight hadn't changed in several months, I had gained 
four pounds of muscle. What that means is a lot of people talk about how muscle weighs less than fat, but that's not actually true. A pound of muscle weighs the same as a pound of fat, but it's the space that they take up. So if you have a pound of fat in your body, you know, think about like a pound of butter. So if you have a pound of fat in your body versus a pound of muscles in your body, it takes up smaller space in your body. So that's where you're gonna start to feel your clothes feeling better. So even though the scale hasn't changed because they weigh the same, the amount of space it takes up in your body is less. So that's where you're going to start to see less lumps and bumps in your body and your clothes start to feel better. And so that's all from that muscle mass. So start to incorporate that in. Try and do two to three days a week. Keep up that walking because I think the walking is super critical. It really helps you in so many ways. It's good for your energy. It's good for your sleep. It's good for your digestion. So keep that walking walking going. But see if you can incorporate some 15-20 minute weightlifting exercises throughout the day. If you don't have weights in your house, then pick up some water bottles and, and start using those. And if you get an opportunity, pick up a couple of weights. I've found them easily at Goodwills around us. So go thrifting and see if you can find someone's discarded weights and just make it part of your routine. I think you will definitely benefit from it. And again, it's going to help us maintain maintain our weight loss because those muscles take a lot more fuel to maintain your muscles. Try that out. Let me know how that goes for you this week. Okay, and my last tip for today is to think, start to think about what you're going to do after this 30 days. So take next week and start to think about how you feel, how you feel mentally, how you feel physically, how you feel in your clothes, Think about all those things and realize that while I did a 30-day carnivore challenge, I did that because it's a heck of a lot easier to try something for 30 days than to try something for 90 days. And 90 days is really where people start to feel the benefits of carnivore. So your first 30 days are truly a transition period where your body's trying to figure out how to use more fuel from the fat, start to burn some of the fat, start to heal some of the ailments and illnesses that you have in your body, heal those hormone imbalances. And so there's a lot going on in those first 30 days. And as I mentioned, some people don't lose weight in the first 30 days. They're doing so much healing that that's what their body is focusing on. So really, if you can go another 60 days and get to that 90 days, you're gonna see that that's really where the magic happens is in that 90 days. You're gonna see more healing. You're gonna see more weight loss. I would encourage you to stick with this for a full 90 days and you will see the benefits. Let me know in the comments below if you plan to stick this out for 90 days. If not, then that's okay. This was a 30-day challenge, but I do hope that you still keep away from those sugars and those highly processed foods. I think we've learned for sure that those are just not good for us, right? And we are all trying to be healthy. So try and keep those sugars and highly processed foods out of your diet. And then for the rest of you that are like, I feel amazing, I am never stopping this, fantastic. We're in this then together because once you start to realize how amazing this makes you feel and how food just doesn't have quite the hold over you that it used to. I used to think about food all the time, like what's gonna be my next meal and trying to keep tricking myself, don't eat yet, don't eat yet, even though all that was on my mind was eating my next snack or my next meal or whatever the case. When you're on carnivore and you start to let the carnivore magic happen, you're gonna start to forget about food and it just doesn't have the same pull on you that it used to when you had sugar and highly processed foods in your diet and all those carbs. I hope that you're in this with me for the long haul. I hope that this 30 days just kind of opened your eyes to what life could be like with a much healthier approach to eating. So let me tell you about the three food videos we're gonna get to now. And hopefully these haven't been too long of videos. I'm trying to keep them super condensed so that you guys can have a little bit of motivation on your Mondays before the week starts. Today's three food videos are all some of my favorites. And they're foods that I don't eat 
ongoing. So I've showed you videos of all the stuff that I kind of keep in my refrigerator and they're my go-tos. These foods are what I make when my husband and I feel like we need to have something fun. So the first one is carnivore pizza and it's a pizza crust that I'm going to show you how to make. And then you can put your favorite cheeses and pepperoni and bacon and sausage, whatever you want on the top. And I'll leave that creativity to you. I'll show you what I did. I put some sausage and pepperoni and a little bit of bacon on ours. It is the best crust. It'll far surpass any of the crusts you've had when you had regular high carb, super processed pizza in the past. So give me a chance with this. It's very easy, very few ingredients, and you're gonna love it. Now it's chicken and has a little bit of dairy in it and an egg. So very few ingredients, but it does have a little bit of dairy. This is the stage, you know, three to four weeks where you can try and incorporate back some foods that maybe gave you trouble in the past. So if you have had a sensitivity to dairy, you might want to try it at this stage. And it's easier if you could do it in these small amounts that are like inside of a recipe or something like that, or just sprinkle it on top of something that you're eating to test it out. See if it causes you to bloat, see if it causes you to feel any aches and pains that had gone away, and then see if it causes any sort of weight stall. My second recipe has similar ingredients, but they're carnivore chicken nuggets. I'm not a big chicken nugget person, but these are crispy on the outside, super moist on the inside. And if you have a good recipe for a carnivore sauce, which there's a ton of recipes out there, I use butter, a brick of cream cheese, and my husband eats it more than I do because of the cream cheese is not always good for me. But if you brown the butter and then put a stick of cream cheese and blend it all together, put some salt in there, that is an amazing sauce to go with these chicken nuggets that I'm going to show you the recipe for. So look for that. And then I also have one that I'm not going to show you the full recipe, but I'm going to show you the end result. And the recipe is so easy that you won't need me to show you the video. You just want to see the end result. And these are my mom's chicken wings. So my mom has an allergy to wheat. And so she has this recipe for chicken wings and I have incorporated that into my carnivore lifestyle and you will love them. Let's get to these videos and have a fantastic week four. I will see you on Monday for our final video in the carnivore 30 day challenge. Thanks for watching today. We're going to make our carnivore pizza and we've got three ingredients, a cup of Parmesan cheese, one large egg, and a can of chunk chicken breast and this is 12.5 ounces. We are going to preheat our oven to 500 degrees and then I drained that canned chicken and I'm putting it out on this parchment paper and making it as separated as I can because we're going to stick this in the oven while it's preheating and get it all nice and dried out. So the key is keep as little moisture as possible in the kit chicken. So we're just going to set a quick timer for this so we don't forget about it and that's just five minutes and right now it's at 326 degrees. So we're going to take that chicken out of there when it's nice and dried. We don't want it blackened or anything like that. We just want it to start to just brown a little bit and all that does is it just takes the moisture out of the chicken. And then I put the one egg and the Parmesan cheese into a bowl and we're going to incorporate those in while we're letting the chicken cool off because we don't want the chicken to cook the egg. So we're going to take our time, mix this up, and then we'll incorporate the chicken into the mixture. Okay and I'm just trying to separate again all that those little chicken pieces that'll make it easier when you incorporate it in. I'm just going to take the parchment paper and we're going to throw this into our egg and parmesan cheese mixture. Keep that parchment paper, we'll need that later when we're moving the dough onto the pan. So we're going to incorporate this in really well as well. I'm just kind of folding it in there. Then we're going to lay this onto some parchment paper, flatten it a little bit, and then get that other piece of parchment paper, which is hopefully dried by now. And we're going to take a dough roller and we're going to roll this out and make it as 
thin as possible. So that's why you want your pan to be as large as it can be because the thinner you make it, the crispier it becomes. And using this parchment paper allows it not to stick to everything. And then this is what it looks like before it goes in. It's extremely thin and that's just the way we like it. This is Jax, our dog. He's my assistant for today. And you can see we're preheated to 500 degrees and we're going to stick this in the oven. And that's a very hot oven, but we're only going to put it in there for a short period of time. So five minutes to start off with and we're going to keep checking it. I wouldn't put it in any longer than 10 minutes, but five minutes will have it nice and brown. You want it browned around the edges because you're still going to put toppings on it. So you'll want to make sure that it's not too overly brown because it will get more brown even once you put the toppings on it. So because we're carnivore, we're not going to put any sauce on this lovely crust, but we're going to put some cheese. And that's my dog Hazel in the background <laughs> over there lounging. And those of you that don't know, I have five dogs. All right, so we're going to take some of this. I'm just using a Mexican cheese blend. You can use any cheese. You can use true pizza cheese, mozzarella, parmesan, whatever cheese you want. This is just what we had in the fridge. And Carnivores know that this pre-shredded cheese is not the best because they do have an anti-caking agent that has a little bit of carbs in it, but this is what I had on hand. If you can buy block cheese and grate your own cheese, you'll appreciate that down the road. Here are some of my options for toppings. I've got some sausages. I've got some bacon. So put whatever toppings you want. Three as well. I decided to use some real bacon pieces. Again, these might not be your healthiest option, but I was going for quick, and this is not something that we have very often so it's truly just a treat. These are just bacon pieces and I'm putting them throughout. Okay let's take our pizza put it back in the oven. We're going to set it again at 500 and we're going to set it for three minutes and keep checking it because again 500 is a very high temperature and there you go that looks pretty good. I like how crispy the edges are. You can leave it in a little bit longer and this is how it comes out. I've cut this up and you can see the edges got pretty browned there. They don't taste burnt um, and you can see how crispy that crust is. It tastes absolutely fabulous. So try that out and let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed that recipe. All right, on to our next recipe, chicken nuggets. And I made these on the same day. You're gonna use a can of chunk chicken breast one large egg, and a half a cup to one cup of mozzarella cheese, just depending on how much cheese you can have in your diet. We are going to use an air fryer for this, and my air fryer says air crisp. We're gonna take this to 350 degrees, and we're going to want to cook it for 12 minutes. So we're gonna preheat this while we're mixing everything together. So I'm incorporating those three ingredients and just mixing it really thoroughly. I did drain the chicken because you don't want the chicken to have all that water in it, but you didn't have to dry it like we did the pizza crust. And I'm going to take a muffin scoop. It is a pretty small one. I would say that's probably uh, half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch scoop. And we're just gonna make some chicken nuggets and you can make them as big as you want. Just keep in mind that you might need to cook them longer. We're going to cook these for 12 minutes. So here they are all staged and ready to go into the air fryer. It took me a little longer than I thought, so I'll reset that timer to 12 minutes and we will put this in. And here's what they look like after 12 minutes. So they're nice and brown and they're very easy to get out. If you don't have a non-stick surface in your air fryer, you may want to spray it. I want to show you what they look like on the inside because they're super crispy on the outside and then the inside they're like almost like a cheese curd if you've ever had a fried cheese curd on the inside. They just have a very moist texture on the inside. Okay for my last recipe this is my mom's chicken wings. You want some chicken wings, a tablespoon of baking powder and some salt and you put all those ingredients into a bag, a, preferably a bag with a Ziploc and you shake it around and then put it in your air fryer and you're going to want to preheat your air fryer to 375 degrees and then you'll cook these for 20 to 25 minutes or, or until they're done. It kind of depends on the size of your chicken wings and then keep in mind you could put other spices if you prefer and these are just super crispy and they almost taste like they have a coating on them but it's just a little bit of salt and some baking powder and any spices that you wanted. So I hope you enjoyed these three recipes. Give me a comment below on the ones that you've tried and which ones you liked or disliked. I hope you enjoyed all those recipes. I know I enjoyed eating them. Have a great week. 
I will see you on Monday for our final carnivore video. It's a little bit bittersweet, but again, send me comments below so that I can give shout outs and celebrate your wins from all this that we've done here. Let me know your non-scale victories, what some of those aches and pains and illnesses that have gone to the wayside now that you've found this healthy way of eating, or if you have a scale victory, you know, what has your weight loss been? What has your experience been? I'd love to hear it. I'd love to celebrate it with you in our final video next week on Monday. I'll see you then.